Sorry, everyone, there's some solar flare activity going on, and the only two things we can watch are a Facts of Life marathon and another Zexy video. So let's check it out. Now, I know I've already made a video attacking ANCAPs, but what can I say? ANCAPs are easy targets. Uh, what channel was the Facts of Life on again? I'll at least give them credit that ANCAP seem to focus less on identity politics and more on economics, but to be honest, that's pretty much why I uh, find it easier to attack their ideas anyway, because I just don't really care about it. Huh. Do you often make six minute long videos about things you don't care about? So I want to talk today about how it seems that ANCAPs don't even understand the main two factors that perpetuate their own ideology. First, the state. The state is an entity that claims a monopoly on the legitimate initiation of force over a geographic area. And secondly, welfare. Welfare is forcibly taking money from some people to give to others. Okay, that's taken care of. Now, I want to say I don't actually support either of these things. Welfare, because it's uh, used by the capitalist to perpetuate capitalism. What? A socialist policy is used to perpetuate capitalism? As the great philosopher Zaphod Beeblebrock said, put your analyst on danger money, baby, now! And I think we should smash the state and replace it with a worker-controlled one instead. So, like all socialists, you still want a state, you just want different people to control it. In this case, the workers. I'd still love to know how you people define workers, and in particular why the owner of the business doesn't count, especially considering they generally put more work into it than anyone, and also shoulder most of the risk. What I'm trying to get across in this video is that ANCAPs don't realize that capitalism relies on these things, and that if they were to be done away with, uh, they'd most likely just be replaced in some other way. So we can't get rid of something because it might be replaced? So you can't replace the broken alternator in your car because the alternator you replace it with might break one day? I've really never understood this argument. Or, yeah, the workers would rise up and lead us to glorious socialism. Or maybe some form of fa fascism. It's really difficult to tell the difference when you look at history. So let's talk about the state first. ANCAPs believe that the state is only there to regulate and hinder corporations under capitalism. Mr. Strawman, give me a break. Or lead to monopolies and mega corporations. Monopolies can only form if the state protects them from competition. They don't hinder corporations. They support some corporations at the expense of others. And they do it by force, either by taking money by force from the people to subsidize these corporations, or to create regulations that protect them from competition. Let's just ignore for the fact that ANCAPs also say that everything good we have is also due to true capitalism. Just shut your pie hole, for goodness sake. There are some good things we have because of government, and there are some bad things that have happened because of the free market. Our real claim is twofold, that overall, we're far better off with the free market than capitalism once you examine both the good and the bad things that both of them have done. Second, even the good things that the state does cannot be justified because they're done via the initiation of force. Now, leftists, on the other hand, believe that the state is an inherent part of capitalism. They are complete contradictions. Capitalism is a system built on voluntary interactions. Everything the state does interferes with voluntary interactions. They are diametrically opposed and is required for capitalism to remain functional. The state as we know it today has never actually been a thing before the birth of capitalism. What? Are you saying we've never had a government doing the things the current US government, for example, is doing today? You haven't studied the Roman Empire, have you? And since the birth of capitalism, it's been growing alongside with it. Government is always growing. That's nothing new. It's been the case for thousands of years. Capitalists tried to create a small government in 1776. It's just grown since then, as governments always do. That's why anarcho-capitalists don't want such a system in place at all! Capitalism and the state have always been entwined, you know, since the centuries ago that was created. Government has been entwined with everything for millennia! The capitalists of history tried to reduce that as much as they could. And in a sense, are dependent on each other. Mm, no. Capitalism always tried to oppose the state. Look at Bitcoin. Look at Uber and Lyft. 
Look at darknet marketplaces. Capitalism keeps trying to make new innovations that increase consumer choice and make our lives better. Governments oppose that. And that is why Ross Ulbricht is serving two life sentences for doing nothing more than making an e-commerce site that government couldn't regulate. The interests of the ruling class, who are a minority, will never align with the interests of the working class, who are the majority, as everyone in capitalism wants to be on top. Are you just stupid, or have you been drinking? No one is convinced by this, what were you thinking? There is no being on top with capitalism. You know the groupie people always seem to leave out of these diatribes? You talk about the state, you talk about business owners, you talk about workers, you know who you never talk about? Consumers! Regular people! Most of whom are workers, but some of whom are business owners or whatever, but that represent everybody in the economy! It's consumers that benefit from capitalism, because it's consumers that everyone else is ultimately beholden to. And that's why you people always leave them out! Basic logic dictates that you can't have everyone on top, because then everyone's the same. And that would be a bad thing, why? You're stuck in zero-sum thinking. Moreover, you're stuck in authoritarian thinking where you declare that there's a single good thing for everyone. But value is subjective. People have different goals and desires and priorities and levels of risk they're willing to take. Capitalism is the only system that can deliver the variety of solutions that people want, without having to force them to employ the solution that you think is best for them. So it doesn't really work. This is why even if everyone really is pulling up their bootstraps and trying just their best, uh, you're always going to have people at the bottom of society. Yeah, and as Milton Friedman asked, just how mathematically are you going to get rid of the bottom 20%? There's a joke where a train company consults with an engineer, a medical doctor, and a socialist. The problem is that when there's a train wreck, the people in the last car are the ones who are hurt most severely. The engineer wants to develop a new braking system for the rear car. The doctor wants to pad the seats and install seat belts. But the socialist says, Remove the last car! If capitalism is so terrible, how come the poor have made the greatest gains under it? How have we managed to cut worldwide poverty in half in the last 20 years? living with far worse conditions than anyone else. The facts just do not bear you out on this. The poor under capitalism are far better than the rich were in history. Those rednecks in the trailer parks actually live better than King Louis did. In fact, the majority of people will be living that. <laughs> Not everyone can have it good under capitalism. Again, zero-sum thinking. In every economic metric, people are better off the more economically free a country is. They have lower income and wealth inequality, fewer people living in poverty and extreme poverty, and better upward mobility. It's because of this that the state is perpetually required to oppress the working class to essentially keep them in their place. Oppress them how? What stops them from creating their own businesses? The regulations that do this are going against capitalism. Do you not even understand what capitalism is? It's because of this that the state is required to perpetually oppress the working class by one, keeping them where they are for our generation. Then again, why is there more upward mobility with capitalism? Why is there more innovation and entrepreneurship? Why is there less poverty? You people have no answer for any of this. You just lie and say it's the opposite of what we see and two, making sure they continue to serve their capitalist overlords. The state is made up of the ruling class and serves the ruling class. There is no form of capitalism that doesn't have a ruling class because, as I said, then you wouldn't have classes. Again, there are no classes in capitalism. With pure capitalism, you wouldn't have a ruling class at all. That's why it's called anarcho-capitalism. Anarchy means no rulers. If you do remove the state under capitalism, one of two things is going to happen. Firstly, the working class, now no longer oppressed, will rise up and overthrow their capitalists. Gotta love how every solution you see involves violence. That says a lot more about you than it does about us. Well, uh, realizing that they don't need a CEO to run, run their own workplace. Except they do! The ones who've tried doing without a CEO, or have tried dropping the salary of their CEO, have failed! Or what's more likely to happen, the ruling class will use private police forces, private armies, and private media platforms to spread their propaganda so that one mega corporation or several uh, cooperating uh, 
uh, corporations can form their own kind of corporate state that does everything the state does today in terms of oppressing the working class. How do you even figure this? You're just saying a whole bunch of things will happen without any causal logic linking them. Everyone will have access to competing private police forces, so none of them will be able to subdue the others. Everyone will have open access to information, so propaganda will not work. And anyone would be able to create a competitor to these corporations. You just claim, oh, this'll happen because it'll happen, because reasons, because potato. You have nothing backing you up here. Secondly is welfare. Now, welfare is important for one main reason. When you have unemployed people, welfare prevents them from revolting. Funny then how they didn't revolt before the welfare state, but that was likely due to the upward mobility I mentioned. Not only was the percentage of people in poverty decreasing, it was a different percentage each time. The ones from a year or two earlier had lifted themselves out of poverty, and the ones now in poverty were immigrants or young people just entering the workforce or things like that. Now, under socialist welfare policies, the poverty rate stopped dropping, and now it's something that lasts from generation to generation. It was socialism that stopped that. Now, I know ANCAPs think unemployment wouldn't be a problem, but can you honestly say that would at be all times 0%? Straw man, I can't stand it when you spew it over and over again. If you knew the first thing about economics, you'd understand the concept of natural unemployment. This is what happens when people switch jobs or careers or whatever. It's one big reason for that upward mobility I mentioned. There are two types of unemployment you wouldn't have. You wouldn't have cyclical unemployment, the boom-bust cycle, because you wouldn't have a government or a central bank creating money and credit and fueling the bubble. And you wouldn't have artificial unemployment, which is when people are put out of work by regulations like the minimum wage. Because here you have two options. You can say there will be some unemployment, in which case these people are going to get desperate due to the lack of food. No, they aren't, because natural unemployment never lasts more than a few weeks or so. Let's say the natural unemployment level is 1%, but a month later, it'll be a different 1% than the previous month, because they all found jobs and other people have quit or whatever to try and find better jobs. You only get that desperation when individuals are unemployed for a longer amount of time. Or if you say it would be 0%, shows again how little you actually know about your own ideology. How much can a person take? Mr. Strawman, give me a break. Unemployment is something that the capitalists utilize to make profit. So if there is no unemployment, unemployment would be artificially created. What are you talking about? How would capitalists artificially create unemployment? The job market is no different than any other market. It works on supply and demand. Workers are the supply. More workers will seek jobs that pay more. Firms are the demand side. They'll hire more people at lower wages. The equilibrium is the point where those two cross. If firms try to set wages lower than that equilibrium, then they won't be able to find as many workers as they want, so they'll increase the wages they're offering. On the other hand, if there's unemployment, if a lot of workers are demanding jobs, they'll lower wages so they can hire more people. Every unemployed person is a potential resource that can benefit a firm. They have an incentive to employ as many people as they can. Especially when there's no minimum wage installed. If someone is starving to death, they're going to be willing to work for any price that will put food on their table or their family. And if they have the skills and experience to demand a higher wage, then that's just an incentive for another firm to offer them that higher wage to take them from their competitor. But if they can't demand that higher wage, what's your holy government going to do? Minimum wage just means they're not legally allowed to have a job. And if they take the job at lower pay, they'll gain work history and experience that they can then use to demand a higher wage later on. People who work for minimum wage rarely stay working at that wage for more than a year or two. Another question you morons never seem to want to answer. If this is in any way true, then how come less than 3% of workers work for minimum wage? Wouldn't they all be working for minimum wage if your insanity were true? If you only have the uh, competition on, among employers, that means uh, wages are only going to be ever getting higher. You mean like Walmart and Target have been doing, increasing their starting salaries year after year, way beyond what minimum wage laws require in order to get the best workers from each other? What the hell's wrong with that? So it's very much in the interest of the capitalists to create unofficial unemployment. Uh, uh I... Uh. 
I don't even... Uh. Some statements are just too stupid to formulate a response to. Unofficial unemployment? Huh? Even if there is none in the first place. If they create the unemployment, then it balances this out. The only way they'd be able to create unemployment is by firing people. So, you're saying they want to fire people only to hire them right back again? Have you spent two seconds thinking this through? I get that a lot of ANCAPs and Libertarians don't like the state, not because they feel it uh, hinders corporations or leads to monopolies, but simply because they feel that any service carried out by the state is always going to be less efficient than if it were carried out privately. And I can see where they get this from. I mean, isn't it in America where you can get a pizza faster than you get a police response? The thing is, they're right, but only for the state on to capitalism. Are you serious? Do I have to go into the problems with things like ambulance services in countries with universal health care? These things tend to be worse the less capitalist the country is. If the state under capitalism is not open to direct democracy and is instead a bureaucratic fuckfest... Wait, are you saying there should be a public vote every time someone calls emergency services? And you think that'll somehow be more efficient? No, that's completely ridiculous. So it means there are only two options. It'll either be a firm that has an incentive to provide a service efficiently, or it'll be some bureaucrat who has no such incentive. There really isn't a third option here. When there's no competition involved, it's obviously much likely to have uh, lower quality of services. Which is why you don't want it in the hands of government! How come every monopoly is terrible except for government, which is the ultimate monopoly? However, a worker state, on the other hand, is different. A worker state serves the workers, and it is the workers who decide exactly and directly how things are run. Uh-huh. And how are they going to do that any better than politicians or bureaucrats? The way you solve this is to give people the incentive to provide the service efficiently. And the only way you can do that is with capitalism! This is something you don't get in a state today, or in even private companies. It's because of this, and how it's in the best interest of everyone that the services that the state provides are working as best as possible, that, the, that they're going to be functioning better under socialism. Except it's been tried many, many, many times. And every single time, it's been a complete and abject failure. Now, this wouldn't be better than workers directly controlling the means of production themselves, of course, and it would only be temporary. But it works on the same principle. Anyway, thanks for watching. Ah! Ear rape! Jeez, people, when will you learn to normalize your volume levels? Maybe this is an argument for a hierarchy. Leave audio to skilled audio engineers. Jeez. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, why not hit like and subscribe? And to make sure I can keep producing content, support this channel by becoming a patron. And check out all the other great content here, like this video selected especially for you.